In today's video, guys, we are going for a garage update, updating on every car that I've got, including cars that haven't been on the channel for a while because they are complete, just haven't moved on yet, and I will explain why that is. Um, also, we have a load of boxes in the workshop which should contain some Porsche body parts, which we will go through. Uh, yeah, just an update on every car, basically. I'll even give an update on poor little Trevor over in the corner. And also in this video, I'm going to reveal something that I've been thinking about doing for a while. I've got, had a lot of uh, messages, like loads of messages about this type of thing. So I think it could benefit, well, you and me. But we will start off over in this corner here where everything here you see hasn't been on the channel for a while. Uh, the most recent one being the M2, and that is actually still awaiting the body shop. Now, the guy that I use, who is actually really good, who did the roof, he has all the paint uh, for the car, so it just makes sense for him to finish the rest of the job. But he's quite busy, well, very busy, in fact. And I booked this car in probably nearly a month ago, and it's still not actually due to go to the body shop until uh, towards the end of May. So unfortunately, this is going to be sat here for a while longer before it is fully complete. I don't really want to be taking it down the road with uh, stupid mismatch, uh, mismatched bumpers, etc. So I'd just rather it be complete before it goes on the road. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with the M2. It is complete bar some bodywork. So unfortunately, that's where it will sit for a few weeks yet. Now, the S3 is done. That has been complete for a while. It's still sat there, as you can see. There is a reason I haven't advertised it or I haven't sold it. And that is something that I'm, I've am i been waiting to do a video on for ages, but what's happening with it has been dragging its heels uh, quite some time for quite some time, and it's just not quite ready to reveal yet. But it will make sense once I reveal that. So that will be the S3. Um, the wheels, yeah, you're right, they don't look great on the S3 at all. They are going to go back on the Mark 7 GTI. I have bought a set of standard black edition alloys, which are diamond cut, to go on this, which I think will work well with the chrome uh, surrounds, etc. So they are, I've got them in the workshop, just need to put them on. But yeah, they'll be going on here. Now, here we have the very elusive RS6 that's been sat here for a while, and it requires two new turbos. Now, I've been umming and ahhing what to do about this car for ages. And that is because it's just a tricky one. I paid, I think, nearly 11 grand for the car. I don't know how long ago, maybe a year ago. Uh, we got it in the workshop. It was supposed to drive fine. I mean, it would always take a gamble. I knew there'd be something wrong with it, but it, it turns out it needs two new turbos at least, uh, or reconditioned turbos, which is fine. But the trouble that got with this car is it's done 215,000 miles, which means the value of it isn't gonna to be too much more than 11 grand, even with it fixed. Not to mention the cost of having the turbos done. I've already replaced the full PCV system as well, which is probably three to 400 quid already spent on it. Um, so even with it fixed, I'm unlikely to get my money back. Now, with these C6 RS6s, they break for a lot of money in parts. I mean, a breaker's yard could probably sell that for parts for a good 15,000 uh, pounds, which means it has a minimum value even when broken of sort of eight to 10,000 pounds. So I'm at that tricky crossroad of, do I lose more money, fix it, and it still might uh, not run right? Or do I just sell it for a, to a breaker's yard and just be gone with it? So let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. Uh, you think I should do because ultimately it is going to be a money pit whatever way I go. Uh, so yeah, that's why it's kind of sat there and hasn't moved since. And then we move on to the R8 V10 that I haven't actually put on the channel for probably eight or nine months now. Uh, it's actually been sat in the garage for about four months. I've just bought it out literally last week to get it MOT'd because the MOT ran out. I'm kind of just waiting to the beginning of May now to tax it because it's like 60 pound a month road tax. So uh, I'm going to start driving it again in May. But yeah, this is pretty much the only car that I've got on the channel or I own that isn't salvage. Um, but yeah, she's tucked, uh, nothing wrong with her at all. She's absolutely fine. Um, but she's tucked around the corner here to stay away from prying eyes. And speaking of prying eyes, I'd like to take a minute to talk about today's sponsor. Now, before we carry on, I just want to give a massive thanks to today's sponsor of the video, which is Private Internet Access, or PIA for short. PIA is a virtual private network, or VPN for short. It hides your IP addresses and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. That way, it shields your digital life from the eyes of those that are looking to exploit your private information. Think of it as walking down a busy high street with an invisibility cloak on. PIA hides your IP address and encrypts your internet connection, and with over 30 million downloads, they never record or store data. PIA protects you from the prying eyes of hackers, internet service providers, and anyone else that wants to view your personal information. 
Hackers that are connected to the same Wi-Fi network as you have the ability to steal your information with ease, including passwords, keystrokes, and even photos. Now, along with the privacy benefit, PIA can actually give you access to content that may be blocked in your region, but is available in a different region by using a different IP address. For example, Netflix, Amazon Prime, and others. So PIA helps you overcome these restrictions by giving you the option to change your IP address to one of 84 countries and to choose from all 50 states, allowing you to gain access to websites and services that are only available in these locations. PIA works on all devices such as Windows and Mac OS, and it allows you to protect an unlimited amount of devices in one subscription. I have PIA installed on both my MacBook and my iPhone, and in just one click, you're protected. So downloading PIA is completely risk-free as there is a 30-day money-back guarantee. So click the link in my description, you'll go over to the landing page, and that deal is 86% off, and it works out at under £1.60 a month for two years. So a massive thanks to Private Internet Access for sponsoring today's video. And then after the R8, we have the Golf GTI Mark 7. Again, I haven't used this since I did the track down it last year at some point. Um, it's got the old, uh, well, it's got its own GTI alloys on it, which are going to come back off. I don't know what I'm going to do with those yet. Um, but yeah, this is the car that I was, Cat S fixed it, wrapped it in silver, which is holding up quite well, actually, to be fair. Even though it was my first attempt at a wrap, um, it's still holding up pretty well. So yeah, that's doing all right. Um, yeah, this is one with probably just under 500 horsepower. Uh, runs absolutely fine, nothing wrong with it at all. Just, I just don't use it. But again, like the Audi S3, that is gonna go down the same road as that. Again, all will be revealed soon. That is why I haven't bothered trying to sell it. Um, I may change it up. I may take some mods off and knock it down to just a KO4 uh, without the hybrid and take the hybrid off and put it on something else. I don't know yet, or I just may leave it as 500 horsepower. But uh, yeah, the Golf 7 GTI is still here and it's gonna have the same fate as the S3. You probably all know what's gonna happen, but I just haven't revealed it yet. So we have another vehicle here, which I actually bought at the same time I bought the S3 back in maybe August last year. I haven't actually revealed this on the channel. Um, and the reason for that is because I was doing a lot of driving at the time last year using my trusty Fiat over here, which she's done nearly 200,000 miles. Um, and I bought this 21 plate. It's only done 2000 miles, Fiat Ducato, uh, as a replacement, like a cheap replacement. I was gonna fix it on the channel, uh, replace it with the old one over there and then use it as a recovery truck. But I'm trying to, again, this all makes sense soon, trying to steer away from driving and concentrate more on YouTube. So, so my priorities kind of change with this and I don't necessarily, need to use it anymore so i haven't done anything with it uh i do either need to get on with it and fix it or sell it on to someone who will because it's devaluing uh, being a 21 plate ducato uh with only 2000 miles on the clock so it's it's i'm losing money on it every time every month it sits there so yeah I, I do need to pull my finger out and also I, I, i've done a few polls on it as well and i wasn't sure if people are going to be really interested in a van rebuild every time i've done a poll it's kind of ended up being the loser so it's probably another reason why i just haven't done anything with and we move on to the cheap little Seat ibiza which did i buy by mistake i think i bought this by mistake i don't even know now it was like 200 ah no i didn't i paid 200 quid for it thinking it was going to be 200 quid and with fees and everything it ended up being like 500 quid uh this thing does run i've put some rubbish hubcaps on it to make the steel wheels look uh, a bit better um i think it's i paid to get the interior done so it's oh. so the car is actually fine it's probably a little bit moldy inside no it's actually quite clean now uh, it's probably a little bit moldy because it's sat here for a while oh battery still even works it's got a new battery on it um but uh, yeah i just haven't done anything with it it's probably a 500 pound car even after <laughs> all the things I've done to it. It's got a stupid exhaust on it, which I haven't taken off. But yeah, that is the Seattle Ibiza. If someone wants it, uh, just let me know. If you want a little project for yourself, it only, it only needs a few bits doing on it and then it's, it's good to go really. But uh, yeah, that's just sat there as well. And we have the Octavia Mark III VRS. Uh, this one, I'm actually using this as a daily driver at the minute. I have been for the last uh, couple of months. Um, absolutely nothing wrong with this at all now. I don't know if I put on the last video if it was fully fixed or not, I can't remember, but basically I had a DPF light that wouldn't reset with my tool. So I ended up taking it down to a local specialist who had the correct tools and was able to reset it for me properly. I don't know why VC had a, a DS wouldn't do it, but it wouldn't. Um, but yeah, that's absolutely fine now. There's no faults with this whatsoever. And it is actually for sale. So if anyone's interested in it, 
please do let me know uh, or direct message me, whatever. Um, I think the cheapest ones for sale is like seven and a half gram, like for like. Uh, I just want six gram for this. So if anyone's interested, do let me know. But otherwise, yeah, she's absolutely sweet. And we move back into the workshop and yeah, it's getting a bit messy again, but this is the last remaining car that's kind of not an active project, hasn't been on the channel for a few months. Uh, we have the TVR in the corner here. Um, I did say in a video a few months ago, this is, the car, this is the car that I'm not going to sell. So with others, I'll buy them, fix them and sell them. So I'll always have the money coming back in. But with this, it is a big outlay, which I'm not gonna get back. So that is why this is gonna be a bit more difficult to do. And uh, yeah. So yeah, just waiting for that money that I can lose and not expect to get back. But yeah, a proper dedicated video on the TVR will be coming at some point in the next couple of months. And one other car that I've got that's not actually active on the channel is the Mark II Skoda Octavia VRS. Now that had, um, I sent that off to the garage that did the VRS Mark III to try and find uh, a boost leak because I didn't have the equipment to do it. Um, and they've actually had that for about two months now. Um, I think they've ended up tracing the fault back to the ECU. So I'm just waiting to get a quote on an ECU about whether it's worth repairing or not. Uh, basically just had a, a coil light that kept flashing. Drove absolutely fine. I mean, I drove with that coil light flashing for nearly two years and it never went into limit mode. It was never an issue. But if I want to sell it on, I kind of need to fix it. So I'm just waiting to hear back about uh, a price for an ECU on that. Um, and that then nicely brings me on to does it nicely? Is it? Does it nicely bring me on to it? It brings me on to the cars that are in active service on the channel, and that being the R8, the Focus RS, and the GT4. And the last video on the channel was getting this running for the first time. I am currently um, quarter of the way through doing the next video, but I've had to put a stop to it uh, because I need some more parts. And yeah, I was a bit fuming when I ordered them this morning because they were very expensive. And as you can see here, look, we have a patch of oil on the floor. And I believe that is the reason why this engine failed in the first place, because there was an oil leak that I found out about. And yeah, the oil leak is back. So yeah, I've ordered some parts to try and rectify that. So the video, uh, next video on the R8 will be coming early next week. And then we move on to the last car, the Focus, I think it's the last car, Focus RS. Uh, and yeah, again, I'm just, I've got some parts. I need to go pick them up. I ordered a load when I did the last video on it. So I'm, I've got, I think I've got most of them. I just need to pop down to my local Ford garage to get the last remaining parts. So there will be video on this once the R8 is, I want, basically want to get the R8 driving out the workshop so it's just i don't have to keep pushing in and out so it's difficult to work on uh, so a focus rs update will be on after the r8 and that leaves me then with the last car which is the porsche cayman gt4 which is in one of these containers so here she is the gt4 all still nicely tucked up and dry oh it smells like petrol it smells so good in there but um yeah she will be coming out very soon I do have the boxes, all the boxes in the workshop, which should have my body panels on. And I think we'll go and unwrap them now just to see what we've got. But before I go ahead and unbox all these Porsche parts, mainly because I'm using it as a nice stand at the moment, I just want to talk to you about something I'm going to do uh, going forward. And hopefully it will interest you guys as well uh, and as well as benefit me too. Uh, now, I get lots of messages, emails, direct messages all the time about um, people just saying that I've inspired them to have a go on fixing their own car or buying maybe a car that's got minor damage and fix it themselves, which is obviously great to hear, uh, great to hear influencing people just to have a go themselves. And maybe it's just my laid back attitude. I make it not appear as bad as it sometimes can be. Um, but it's really good to hear and uh, really happy that people are doing that. So it got me thinking, because I get also a lot of messages saying, would you buy this car? What do you reckon the damage is? So it made me think, well, what if I buy what if I go to somewhere, source a car that I think uh, is really a really good car to buy, uh, a decent price, and I think the damage is going to be reasonable and not too difficult? What well, if I go and buy that car, I bring it on the channel, I do a video of it, I walk around it, tell you exactly what it is, uh, have it up on the ramp, do all potential issues with the car, and then I just sell it to one of you guys. Um, so you've already had a video, you know exactly what's potentially wrong with the car. Um, I can give you my expert opinion on what I think is wrong with it and then you can come and buy the car off me and fix it yourself. Uh, so that's something I'm going to try. Um, I've already bought the, a car that is, I mean, nothing major. I'm not going to go like really expensive cars. I'm going to go anything between sort of like two and maybe seven, eight, ten grand cars. Um, so 
The first one will be here in a couple of days, so I'll do a video on it next week. And I hope you like the format. I haven't done it yet, so um, it'll be interesting to see how that comes out. But let me know what you think in the comments. Is that something that will interest you? Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try it out. So yeah, let me know. And then the last thing we'll do is unbox these Porsche parts here, just to make sure that everything is present and correct. Um, I sh everything should be here. I have no idea. I've had these boxes for about a week and I haven't unboxed them as yet. I ended up stop filming the unboxing process because it was taking absolutely ages. But I've got everything now laid out, so I'm just gonna quickly show you. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because there will be a dedicated video on the GT4 coming soon, but I'll just quickly uh, give you an overview. So the rear quarter panel has actually come a lot more built up than I thought it would. It's already come with all this box section already complete, so that's a, a really good thing. Um, I, I found this piece here, which, I was thinking, where the hell does that go? And I couldn't place it. And then I found out that it's already attached to this quarter panel here. So that actually sits uh, there. Looks if you so if you have a look, there it's the same part. So it's actually already been fitted. Uh, and that was I've just had a look. That was two hundred pound plus VAT. So I'm going to see if I can return it. I'm not confident, but I hope I can. And then over here, look, we have the host of other parts as well. Um, wheel arch liner with some heat shield, uh, cr rear crash beam um, with again some heat shield. This is the rear. This is the same. These two panels here, that one and that one, is what I replaced on the seven one eight. Um, that's just the back panel and that is the floor pan. Here is our chassis leg with our staggered fit look, so that will go on nicely. Um, here is the uh, wheel arch, the metal part, and you can see the box section is all complete as well, so that's good. And I was trying to find out where that part went, because I couldn't see, but I think it goes like, oh, bloody bubble wrap, I think it sits over the top there, like that. Oh, it's hard to see. I'm not 100%, I'm pretty sure that's where it goes anyway. It's, uh, it looks like the most logical place for it to go. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I've just got my, a few old bits out, just so I could try and correlate, but yeah, it's pretty much impossible. So yeah, I need to sit down and go through the list and check off, make sure I've got everything. Uh, make sure there's nothing missing but again i'll do that off camera and also i'll go into more depth uh, when the next gt4 video comes out so that is the garage update guys uh, i hope you did enjoy the video i hope that answers a few of your questions um, and clarifies a few things and i mean i've had to do it for my own sanity as well because i was getting confused um, but there will be a video coming i keep saying it but very soon explaining what's going to happen to the gti and the s3 straight away and then other cars going forward so as always guys i hope you did enjoy the video please do follow me on instagram under saving underscore salvage uh no, not underscore saving underscore salvage and also subscribe if you haven't already to watch the uh the final parts of all three uh the audi r8 the focus rs and more projects to come so as always guys thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one cheers guys